With motor vehicles and the highways they travel are the lifeblood of our nation, carrying necessary goods and providing the freedom of movement of people. Without this vast transportation system, modern society would cease to exist. We would all be at a loss without them. It is obvious that free-flowing traffic all year around is absolutely essential. Like the blood in our veins, we can't do without it. A winter storm can have a devastating effect on this essential mobility. Snow and ice create menacing hazards on streets and highways unless they are removed promptly and efficiently. Keeping roads open and safe is difficult and demanding. It requires thorough preparation and competent, conscientious snow fighters. Controlling snow and ice is of special concern to people in much of the United States and Canada not only because of its impact upon their mobility, safety, and well-being, but because it is costly. Poor snow fighting invites tragedy. Risk management through good highway winter maintenance programs can save lives and millions of dollars spent by municipalities and agencies on accident claims every year. A snowstorm can cost billions of dollars a day, depending on how many states get closed down and depending for how long they get closed down. In the 1996 blizzard, for example, the Northeast was closed for three to four days. That storm cost us at least $10 billion. For every $1 spent on winter maintenance, $60 worth of benefits are received. And in a Marquette University study, Professor David Kummel notes. Our study found that the icing paid for itself in approximately 25 minutes after the bare pavement had been achieved. And after that, the benefits continue to accumulate. Street and highway agencies use various kinds of snow fighting equipment, and their procedures differ. But they all have the same goal, to keep roads open as efficiently, effectively, and inexpensively as possible. To accomplish this, there are certain requirements. Most importantly, trained and experienced snow fighters. Good, dependable equipment is essential for the tough demands of snow fighting. Another need is a dependable de-icing material. The Michigan Department of Transportation and most other snow belt agencies consider salt to be the most cost-effective and environmentally acceptable de-icing method to ensure safe travel for the motoring public. Sand or abrasives used in place of salt in some parts of the country were found to produce airborne dust, which adds to smog and is hazardous to our health when breathed. Salt, on the other hand, if inhaled at all, is absorbed by our respiratory system and becomes part of our bodily fluids. Studies have indicated salt miners to be among the healthiest, even though they breathe salt dust every day at work. Also, drainage and the cost of cleanup may cause unexpected problems when using abrasives. A National Academy of Sciences study known as Special Report 235 of the Transportation Research Board compared salt to calcium magnesium acetate, CMA, a possible replacement for salt. The TRB concluded that salt remains the de-icer of choice. Salt is reliable, inexpensive, easy to handle, store, and apply. Automobile owners today can be less concerned about the corrosive effects of salt. Studies of 1970 models after six years showed that 90% had signs of rust perforation. Car manufacturer improvements by the 1984 models reduced that to 61%, and the National Association of Corrosion Engineers estimates that only 3% of 1989 model vehicles suffered corrosion damage after six years. For different 1995 and later models, most car makers provide corrosion warranty coverage, reflecting improvements by the manufacturers in producing more corrosion-resistant vehicles. The story gets better and better. Preparation and planning are also essential. To prevent obstruction to snow removal operations, key routes must be clearly marked to prohibit parking during snow emergencies. Otherwise, every street becomes an obstacle course, and efficient snow removal is impossible.
Snow fences placed in open areas can minimize the problems of drifting, which can close roads and make snow removal more troublesome and more costly. Good preventive maintenance is necessary in order to reduce other potential problems. Without reliable equipment, a snow fighter might as well go out on the road with nothing but a shovel. Every snow fighting vehicle needs total inspection and full servicing before winter, not just an oil change and lube job, but everything. Not only is maintenance important before a vehicle goes out, but also at the conclusion of each snow fighting operation. All necessary repairs should be made as soon as possible so the vehicle is ready for the next storm. It's just as important to gear up mentally for snow and ice control in order to avoid potential dangers and problems. Pre-winter training will familiarize snow fighters with approved snow fighting methods, procedures, and changes. New developments and safety precautions should be made available so they can do the best job possible. The Snow Fighter's Handbook and several other available publications provide good guidelines for snow fighting. Heavily traveled routes will probably be scheduled for removal of all snow and ice. Bare pavement maintenance, the snow fighter's standard of excellence for optimum public safety. Snow fighters must be completely familiar with roads or streets they'll be cleaning of snow or ice when a storm strikes. Plan driver routes around stockpile locations for efficient winter options. In addition to good training, spending time up front preparing for a winter storm can pay dividends in avoiding criticism. Knowing the job is just as important in snow fighting as reliable equipment. Agencies use a variety of snow fighting equipment to suit the need of specific storms or circumstances. The tools used by agencies for snow removal often vary with other clearing tasks, including parking lots and sidewalks. No matter how good the snow moving equipment, it has limitations. Rarely can a plow, grader, bucket, or blower get a pavement bare. Untreated, the final layer of snow can quickly turn to ice under traffic. And there are times when a light snow, sleet, or freezing rain, which can't be plowed effectively, can produce a coating of ice and close a road just as completely as a couple feet of snow. These are the times when salt becomes an especially important tool for snow fighters. Salt penetrates the snow, ice, or hard pack and forms a brine that prevents bonding to the pavement. It's important to give salt time to work. Traffic must be kept moving. The action of vehicle wheels helps brine do its job. So long as the slush is soft and fans out from tires like water, the salt is working. But when the slush becomes mealy, begins to stiffen and is thrown directly to the rear of tires, it's time to plow again and spread more salt. Special attention must be given to bridges and overpasses. They are the first to freeze if wet or slushy, even after the storm has passed. Salty icing materials are applied with a variety of spreaders which satisfy individual agency needs. The key to successful use of salt is application of the correct amount required by weather, traffic, and road conditions. Guidelines can help, but often it takes experience or roadway information systems to know just how much to use. Anti-icing is the application of de-icing materials just prior to a snowstorm. This technique is gaining increased attention with the use of roadway information systems and infrared pavement sensing thermometers mounted on snow plows. A variety of anti-icers are used, including liquid sodium chloride, also known as salt brine. Brine can be produced by agencies and brine makers at local facilities. A concentration level of 23% salt is considered the best mixture for anti-icing. One of the key benefits of anti-icing is the prevention of ice or snow adhering to the roadway surface, improving snow removal conditions. Other than anti-icing, salt spreading should start as soon as there is sufficient snow accumulation to hold the salt on the road and form brine. Waiting too long will make the salt less effective, plowing more difficult, and require more time and material to reach bare pavement. 
Since each storm is different, requiring a different method of attack, guidelines for salt application are available. For instance, the temperature holding near 30 and wet snow with freezing rain, apply salt at 200 pounds per two lane mile and reapply as necessary. Sleet, 500 pounds. Accumulating snow, 500 pounds per two lane mile while plowing. Below freezing and the temperature falling, two to 400 pounds of salt for freezing rain. Sleet or snow, temperature falling, 300 to 800 pounds, repeating till it stops. Dry snow, dry pavement, temperature below 20 and falling. Plow immediately and apply salt only to wet, packed, or icy spots. For packed snow and ice at freezing temperatures down to zero, 500 pounds of salt per two-lane mile should be spread. Many agencies have found that salt treated with liquids, calcium chlorides, magnesium chlorides, or sodium chlorides, reacts faster and is more effective at low temperatures. There are several methods of liquid pre-wetting application, from onboard equipment to apply liquids at the spreader, to less costly application of the liquid to the loaded truck before it leaves the yard, or to the salt-loaded bucket as the truck is loaded. Most agencies opt for the least expensive method of pre-wetting, but some are lucky enough to have the funds for the more expensive and more efficient onboard pre-wetting systems. Abrasives sweetened with salt will provide traction when temperatures are so extremely low that de-icers are less effective. Once in a while, Mother Nature hits us with heavy snow, wind, and bitter cold, when just about all one can do is plow and hope conditions soon improve. But most snowstorms occur above 20 degrees when salt is especially effective. Since no two spreaders are exactly alike, each one must be calibrated before winter. The Salt Institute has an easy calibration method. First, some salt is placed in the spreader to put weight on the auger or conveyor. Next, the end of the auger or conveyor shaft is marked. All right. All right, go. Now, the number of complete turns the shaft makes in one minute at each setting of the auger or conveyor control are counted. This figure is recorded. With a V-box, the gate opening must be recorded because the calibration will be correct only for that particular size opening. A sample calibration at one control setting will help explain how to calibrate. At setting four, for example, the shaft might make five revolutions. With a piece of canvas or other suitable material or container, the salt discharged by just one complete turn of the shaft is collected. Let's assume that 50 pounds of salt is discharged in one turn of the shaft. This figure will not change, no matter how fast or slow the shaft turns. To find out how much salt is discharged per minute, the number of pounds is multiplied by the number of turns per minute. At setting four, it's five times 50, 250 pounds. If we know how much salt is discharged per minute, and how many minutes it takes to go one mile, it's easy to determine the salt discharged per one mile. Charts are available that translate miles per hour into minutes required to travel one mile. For example, it takes two minutes to go one mile if the speed is 30 miles per hour. That's two minutes worth of salt, or two times 250, 500 pounds per mile. The calibration card should be placed in the truck and kept there, and a duplicate should be filed in the office. Keeping the truck speed and spreader control in correct relationship is vital to applying the specified amount of salt per mile. Not enough salt, and the roads remain hazardous. Too much salt, and the environment may be harmed. Both are wasteful. The right amount avoids waste and criticism and quickly restores mobility and safety. The use of automatic spreader controls will provide constant accurate control of salt discharge, eliminating the need for continually changing the control setting. The automatic control dial is simply set for the amount of salt required per mile.
Then, no matter how fast or slow, uphill or downhill, stop or go, the proper amount will be spread. Automatic controls help to protect the environment and quickly pay for themselves by saving on salt use. They eliminate the problem of salt piling up when trucks reach stop signs, traffic lights and intersections. Whether using manual or automatic controls, it's important that the spinner isn't throwing the salt too far. Not only is that potentially damaging to bystanders, nearby vehicles and roadside vegetation, it's wasteful. Salt should be spread on the high side of super-elevated curves. Then brine will flow across the pavement to melt ice over the full width. Maintenance agencies often use road weather information systems to reduce the chance of being caught by surprise. With up-to-the-minute weather information from the surface of the road, crews can be dispatched when the roadway surface hovers around freezing or below. This saves in labor costs, de-icing materials, and prevents overuse of salt, reducing environmental concerns. Even at night or on weekends, when so many storms seem to strike. Snow fighters and equipment must be ready to roll when the storm starts. Salt or any other de-icing materials must be stored locally, ready for quick access and loading. The Salt Institute recommends that you have 100% of your estimated annual needs in-house, on an impermeable pad and under shed prior to the first snowfall. This policy guarantees available supplies without depending on on-demand delivery during hazardous transportation conditions. Once you are loaded with de-icing materials, it's important to take a few minutes to conduct a walk-around inspection of the truck before leaving the yard. When the walk-around inspection is complete, it's time to begin the serious business of clearing the roads. If it's a two-lane road and there's a light snow, the work is relatively simple. A pass in both directions, spreading the proper amount of salt, and the road is soon safe for traffic. Heavier snow or multiple lane highways present more complex problems. Many departments use tandem plowing, teams of two or more plows working in various combinations. Cul-de-sacs, alleys, and other unusual locations require special procedures that may vary depending upon the equipment, location of hydrants and shrubs, and other vegetation. No single method of snow removal can be specified for these situations. Several methods may satisfy the needs of the individual agencies. Communication with the public before a snowstorm is important. Also, during a storm, snow control operations centers should keep local radio, TV, and newspapers informed about what's being done to keep streets and highways open and to alert them to possible trouble areas for motorists. Snow fighting doesn't end simply with keeping traffic lanes clear. It's important to follow up after a storm. Excess snow piles must be removed from downtown areas with front end loaders. Drains should be opened to let melted snow run off. Hydrants and other facilities essential to public safety should be cleared. Salt must be properly stored to guard against loss, minimize caking, and prevent possible environmental problems. Outside storage is not acceptable. Inside storage under permanent cover is best. Everything possible should be done to prevent contamination from salt stockpiles in the future. There are any number of practical storage facilities available for salt. Prefabricated wood dome structures, concrete domes and other structures, and buildings with numerous designs and materials. As already mentioned, salt stored indoors should also be on an impermeable pad. And charts are available to help you determine your salt storage needs. Good housekeeping at storage sites is also needed. Loader operations can be especially helpful in returning spilled salt to storage areas. By the same token, proper use will ensure that trees and other vegetation will not be affected adversely. Nevertheless, many highway and street departments landscape with salt-tolerant trees, shrubs, and grass. In the annual battle against winter, Reliable equipment, spreader calibration, thorough preparation, and salt are all vital. But they are useless without people who do their jobs well. Know-how and dedication are essential to keeping roads open. Emergency vehicles, commercial traffic, and motorists depend on their ability to travel freely and safely on winter roads. For that essential mobility and safety, they depend on hardworking, dedicated snow fighters.